There is a mainstream foundational approach to documentary, especially with sound, this expectation of, well, it has to be real. How can we make this people forward? And then how can we elevate it from an aesthetic standpoint? Here's a chance to use form to show emotional truth, what is happening in a way that we can't experience in real life, real time. I'm Rika Zatopchi, and I was director of A Woman's Place. I'm Sam Davis, and I was the DP and editor of A Woman's Place. Hi, I'm Jackie Zo, and I was the sound designer and mixer of A Woman's Place. A KitchenAid basically had come to Vox Media, and they said, we want to make a film. I identified this issue of women who deal with all sorts of crazy biases in the culinary industry. We collaborate most projects together, and I think there was already the creative vision of the film from the get-go. We talk about pushing our documentary work to feel cinematic and elevated, and we're really interested in the look and feel and the sound design. When it comes to nonfiction storytelling, especially with sound, it has to be a literal representation of what is exactly happening, when in fact you have the power to kind of rescale and reframe what reality is. In the exact same way that a camera frames your composition, you can rack focus for the viewer what's important. A lot about with sound is just setting up the vocabulary. This is one of our opening sequences. So a lot of the details were just in consideration of how to get our listener and audience used to really thinking and experiencing this film from like a very detailed perspective. A lot of what I do process-wise is just see what the cut offers. I couldn't have done that if the filmmaking didn't allow for it. It's just working with what Sam and Rika set up and so it feels cohesive and never at odds with each other. You don't watch the movie and then listen to it. Uh, it all happens at the same time. So that's a really important part of my process as I edit, is kind of laying that foundation for the sound design. They didn't teach that in culinary school. I would describe working in kitchens with my experience as being more like a pirate ship. So often sound can actually inform a picture edit. I had the thought of, of keyframing some of the steady cam shots to throw the horizons off a little bit so you kind of feel this sort of like watery effect. We had a pirate ship sound effect and then Jackie just brought it to life. You're hearing low end creaking of a ship, water wakes actually against a boat. When the cart rolls by, it's a mixture of like hospital gurney, creaky metal wheels, everything's really scaled up. This is an environment that we don't want to make feel comfortable. There's some really interesting sequences in the film and, and, and ways that we handle the trauma with like some humor and some lightness. And you know, there's a phallic montage in the film in the interviews, every single subject talked about how everything in the kitchen is like a penis. You know, like that's the joke because it's just all these men and they just like joke around like that. What's fun about doing sound for animated sequences is you're at square one, you have a little bit more whimsy and I think room to be more maximalist with the sound because there's nothing else really dictating the tones. Instead of shying away from more cartoony sound effects, we instead want them to really lean into the caricature because they're describing this male-dominated atmosphere. The sound is emulating that. So the laughter in particular is reverbed out in the space to just feel like this haunting feeling. It's really important that we do their stories justice and also that we capture the women in a way that the audience can also look to them with admiration because I look to them with admiration. They've had to, you know, fight a lot to get to where they are. We have the sequence, for instance, where Itana is breaking the meat apart. That's shot in slow motion. All of that kind of slows down with the sound too. You know, all the textures like become richer and the sounds become slower and it, it just becomes a more subjective take on it. I really just wanted to do justice to what I suspected they felt like and I think what the film offers. I love this sequence. So it's this operatic sequence where the music is such an important role. So a lot of the sounds you're hearing are punctuation marks to what we're seeing on camera and what we're hearing with the music to feel this ballet moment. 
in the fridge, there's all this low end for every camera move. Every time a giant rack of meat passes in front of the camera, a low end sound marks it. There's a little bit of cold wind blowing through to really scale up the freezer. Similarly, when they open the truck, everything's scaling up. There's a car by that's in the same beat as the song, as well as two truck doors. Everything's in rhythm with the song at this point to just feel super cohesive. The transition in the skiing is just perfect because there is a lot of snow crunch and cornstarch crunch. What I love about sound design is getting to make real world feel like memory. And we started out telling a story about female chefs fighting an uphill battle in their industry. And we realized due to the circumstances of the pandemic, we were really telling a story about female chefs who are already at odds and now their entire industry was fighting an uphill battle. The ending in particular sets us up with these spaces of a final portrait of all of them, what the textures are. Thank you, Lord. Please. It's the subjective, invisible element that you just feel it. That's what I love about sound, it's, it's just magic. <laughs>